In this video we're going to take a look at stripping down the front disc caliper uh, of a 1979 Honda CB200. We're going to start by uh, undoing the brake cable from the handlebars, take throwing that brake cable all the way down to the caliper. So we'll get the brake cable off and we'll get the caliper off and then we'll strip it, clean it, reassemble and adjust it. To start off with we've got to remove this rubber boot off here if you have one fitted on your bike. This will gain us access to the top end of the brake cable into the handlebars. Don't forget, don't lose the screws. Following the brake cable down to where it meets the caliper, you need to undo the nut on the adjuster and then screw in the adjuster to remove all the tension in the brake cable. Now that we've got all that undone then a 10mm socket and undo the caliper cover. Moving the caliper cover, we then got the gasket. Take care with that. And we've then got the adjustment ratchet. I generally try and pull this out a bit, and if you're lucky, it can sometimes retract the, uh, the screw thread in there, which it has done. The screw's completely out now on the arm. We can then get in there, take out the adjustment arm and the thrust plate and then by bringing this down we can then try and take out the brake caliper. At this stage you might find it actually easier to undo or disconnect the brake cable from the actual brake lever at the top there um, and that will then put a bit more slack in the brake lever and the brake cable which then allows you to get in there and take the keeper out to release the brake cable completely and there's my brake adjustment, adjustment arm for the caliper and then the brake cable should then come out quite nicely. Like that. And then you can carefully feed the brake cable out through all its keepers and runners until you've got the brake cable out. So this end is in the handlebars, 
this end is in the caliper. So we'll uh, we'll clean, inspect, and check that a bit later. Inside here we've got the one of the brake pads disc and the other brake pads in there behind. To actually remove the whole caliper unit we've got to get to these screws. You can just see one of them here and one just here as well. The other one's just in here. And these two inner ones on the inside here actually hold the mudguard in place. And this one here holds this shield on the disc just around here. So to get these off, um, we've got to get in the inside here and undo these uh, three bolts on the inside, which uh, we'll do in a minute. But let's get to the bench and uh, have a look at all the bits I've taken out. So here we have the adjustment arm and bits removed from the inside of the caliper. So to get the adjustment screw, which sits just in there, out, uh, get the plate, make it on there and just screw it out. This is also a good thing to check sort of how freely it all moves. Um, so yeah, take that out. So we've got our adjustment screw out, adjustment arm, thrust plate, and then the little keeper for the uh, disc brake, uh, for the brake lever, uh, brake cable. So, checking the parts over, we've got the thrust plate first. Now, if you saw in my last video, you would have seen that this piece here, this lug that sits inside the uh, the caliper body, um, had been ground away. And you can see how on this one it's much larger. Um, and it actually looks in better condition than I thought it was. It's got some, some chipping on the inside here, just in there. Just here. But other than that, it seems to be in reasonable good condition. A little bit pitted and rusted, etc. But that looks like it should be okay. Screw thread, adjustment thread, looks to be okay as well. <coughs> the old plastic uh, ratchet adjuster. Uh, all the teeth look good in that. No breakage, no cracking. That looks good. And the last thing to look at is, of course, the adjustment arm itself. So now that we've cleared the decks, this is the, um, the adjustment arm. Here is the bit that's retained in the uh, thrust plate. And in my last video, you would have seen the one off the salvage bike. It was actually cracking at the point where the ball bearings... Um, press against this plate uh, the ball bearings were heavily corroded as well in this one though the ball this plate firstly looks to be in good condition it's got no cracking um, the ball bearings themselves look to be in good condition um, and then of course we've got the thrust bearing that sits here these uh, three plates here two washers on the outside and then the brake race and the bearings in there now a good thing to do, or a thing you should do first really, is keeping the unit together. You can see inside here the rollers, uh, they're just coming out on the camera, you can just see them through here. Best thing to do is just to rotate this and to make sure that all the rollers are there. There should be, I think it's 20 of them. Um, you want to make sure there's no missing uh, whatsoever before you start doing anything to it. Um, so make sure they're all there. So yeah, this one looks okay. None of them are missing. And having a quick eyeball at them, they look to be okay as well. Taking the face of the thrust plate, of the thrust bearing, that looks to be not pitted or damaged or scuffed. A little bit of pitting in it, but that seems to be okay. And then the other side, just... Uh, open it up and just check the inside of that to make sure that the thrust bearing is okay. Now what I'm going to do with this um, this uh, adjustment arm is I'm going to whack it in a white spirit uh, bath um, in the ultrasonic cleaner and give it a really good thorough clean. Um, get some degreaser in there as well and really clean this, uh, this uh, unit out 
Um, the other thing to check is to check that these uh, little springs here um, are in good condition as well. And again, when you when you put the, this on to the screw thread, you need to just check that it actually does work and prevent this, this ratchet unit from going backwards. So it only should go one way, obviously, to adjust the screw thread um, and push the, the screw thread out. So we'll get this in the bath, get it uh, started on the cleaning process, and uh, we'll strip off the caliper body um, and uh, have a look at that. For cleaning the um, adjustment arm, I generally use a uh, white spirit and a uh, sonic um, cleaner. Um, clean tub, make sure it's clean, make sure it's got no holes in it, of course. You've checked your um, adjustment arm already, you've made sure it's got all the parts it needs, all the bits are there, so you know that when you uh, take it out, you should have all the bits when you come out. If not, they'll be swilling in the bottom of it. And get my white spirits, as you can see these have been used before. and completely submerge the uh, part in there and then over to the ultrasonic cleaner so <clears throat> over to the the cleaner now this is just a uh, a small jewelry ultrasonic cleaner um, and of course it needs water, it needs the connectivity between the body of the cleaner um, and obviously the unit itself won't work too well so whack some water in there up to the fill line and then and give it its four minutes so we're back at the bike and we'll remove the uh, caliper unit. So a 10mm spanner in here. Not going to see very much but we're just undoing the three bolts that hold the caliper. And for these top ones, hold the mud guard in place. The bottom screw down here is a 12. And there's our caliper release. So there's the three, three points of attachment, and these allow the whole body to swing uh, with any fluctuations in the brake disc and keep the, the brake pads nicely tight against the disc. So there's that removed as well. Let's uh, get this to the bench and we'll uh, check and inspect this as well. While you're here at the disc, it's pretty good to uh, check your disc for any uh, dinks or dents or pitting, etc. Um, uh, so you can do that while you're there. So now we've uh, taken off the caliper, we can uh, have a look at its parts. Uh, the first thing to do is to get the, um, the brake discs out. I'll quickly turn the sonic cleaner on again. So let's have a look at the uh, cover plate. Thing to check is any nings, dicks, or anything like that. So it looks to be okay, and the spring is in good condition at the bottom. Now, with this caliper, it's got uh, 
new pads in so one way to get the pads out is to get something into here and to prise this pad out but they should have a little hole just in here so this is the one to retain the pin from the adjustment arm but there should be another thread in here which should take in this case I think it's a six mil bolt and that should then come out and allow you to uh, check and inspect the seal and obviously the pad itself not very much wear on this it's a fairly new pad put that to one side and then to get this out you can push on this pin the other side and the pad should if it's in okay condition just swivel out so swivels out and then out comes the pin and again you can check that and make sure it's in good nick <coughs> the housing itself looks fairly good the one thing I was really concerned about with this housing was in here and this is the place where the thrust plate sits in here um, and what I'm looking for is to make sure it's got a good bite so it's not going to rotate um, and it actually looks better than I thought it was, which is good. It doesn't appear to be going anywhere. Though there is, as you can see, there is slight bend out there. So we haven't got a perfect 90 degree piece against the actual housing. So in theory that could, as it were, pop out and rotate and in the past it looks like that's what's actually happened you can see some you know, make out some wear just here on the caliper where that's actually happened um, I think the way to really prevent that from happening is making sure that the cover is securely uh, attached in place before you uh, rack up the brakes and of course there's a bit of clearance in there uh, for the gasket to sit but that looks to be seating okay nicely in there and also seating fairly nicely in there as well like that so that looks okay so let's put that to one side the next bit to check is to this uh, this arm obviously allows the unit to slightly fluctuate if there's any alterations in your disc um, so top piece comes off there should be an o-ring at the top here and at the bottom here if I remember rightly from the last time I worked this actually this the o-ring at the bottom had failed um, and I couldn't get hold of a new one but uh, I've got a replacement now so I take that out bit of rust starting in there so I need to get that cleaned off but that looks okay and then <coughs> a little o ring which like I said I've got a replacement now so we'll give uh, we'll give this a thorough clean and tidy it up and uh, that should be ready for reinstallation another thing to check out is the screw thread for the uh, tensioning screw that goes in the top here. I'll uh, take that out and give that a clean as well. So a bit of uh, force needed on this one. Well, we should be able to. There we are, and that should uh, unscrew nicely. Now we have the screw thread, and that looks to be fairly good. So that's the caliper body stripped. Um, there is a, or there should be, this uh, rubber uh, insert in here, and this uh, seals the pin on the on the uh, pad. This pin here, in here, and stops. Um, gunk etc getting into there so in fact we'll leave it there because removing these you can obviously rip and uh, damage his old uh, rubber grommets but we'll uh, take care of that
and uh, we'll give that a thorough clean. We'll also clean the uh, the cover plate as well, get in there, get rid of all that uh, old grease, and uh, we'll clean the adjust the uh, the holding pin and its top. Um, the only other thing really to do is to give the nuts, bolts, etc., the bolts um, a, a good clean up um, and uh, ready for reinstallation um, in a moment. Last thing is the gasket. Now, if you've not got a gasket uh, on this unit, then you probably should make one. Um, I've not been able to find anywhere selling these gaskets, so I'm sort of reliant on this one that I've still got. Um, I might actually use this to do, I might scan it on the scanner with a, a ruler beside it. Um, which will then give me a digital copy of this that I can scale in the computer so that I can uh, print it out in the future to uh, make a new one. You can obviously use this to, um, you know, use it as a template to uh, cut out a gasket. But it's a fairly thick gasket on, on this, obviously with the, the two plates coming together. There is a slight gap um, caused by the thrust plate um, sitting to give you a nice good uh, seal um, with the gasket, so yeah, so um, uh, I don't like using the the uh, sealant stuff if I can at all help it. So I will probably clean this gasket up extremely carefully um, in the hope of getting a a scan of it um, for future reproduction because this one is looking a little bit compressed um, and uh, may not be sealing as well as it should be. So the <coughs> The adjustment arm has finished um, cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner uh, for the last sort of eight minutes or so, so we'll get that out um, and have a look at how good the cleaning's job. Uh, but I'll first clear the clear the bench and ready for that. So we've um, wet the uh, the arm in the ultrasonic cleaner. Let's try and get it out of the white spirit straight on to some kitchen roll and dry that off a bit. Now I'd say that the first thing to do before you do anything else is to check that you've got all the rollers uh, still in the thrust bearing. So rotate it around and you're looking in here to make sure that all those rollers are still in situ and you've not lost any in the uh, in the cleaning bath. I'd also recommend whenever working on small parts to always work on a towel. If things bounce onto the hard surface of your bench they'll bounce um, and uh, you'll never find them again. So always I'd say use a towel or something as a soft surface to work on. We can open up um, the washers thrust brake to have a look at how clean and tidy the inside of this is and that's looking fairly clean and tidy I can't see much in the way of corrosion a bit of gunk coming in in some places um, and we'll get something in there to give them a clean but we don't try and hold the spray and get together because these rollers will come out um, if you're not careful so Having a look at the ball bearings in here to see what condition they're in. They want to be nice and shiny and clean. Um, and we're also obviously just checking out to make sure we've got rid of all the old grease and the old grime that was in there. Now, if you have problems stripping um, the kind of for the, the unit, for example, you can't get this screw thread out, the screw that sits near the adjustment uh, screw that sits in there. Um, you can use a flathead screwdriver in here, make sure it's not going to uh, bang the sides into there. Um, and what you're aiming to do obviously is to get the screw into the split of this to screw it out. And it comes out and it's front face this, this side. It doesn't come out that way, it comes out this way. So you can get a screwdriver in here and screw that unit out. 
if for any reason it's seized or bound in there etc I would suggest using a, a degreaser or something just to try and uh, loosen up and get this out there's no um, rubber seals or anything in this it's all it's all metal so um, it's some sort of confidence with what you use to to degrease etc um, <clears throat> looking at this part there's still a bit of cank and grease in there so I might put it back in the bath for another clean um, or I might actually just give it a brush over um, to get rid of some of the rust so I'll give this a good clean um, a bit more of a clean as it were and uh, we'll come back to it in a moment. Right, we've finished cleaning the um, adjustment arm unit and as ever, as I was cleaning it, one of the rollers came out from in here. So again, because I was on the towel, where it didn't bounce off anywhere, and I generally keep these pots off the old WD-40 uh, for things like this. And what we can do is we can take that roller and with a bit of jiggery pokery put it back in place and there it is back in place now once you've uh, cleaned this, particularly with white spirit, um, you need to make sure that all the white spirit is gone. If you also use any sort of wire brushes or anything to clean off any rust, then again you want to make sure you've got rid of any bits um, of that that might have fallen in. Uh, bits of cloth, bits of rag, bits of dust, everything. Give it a good clean um, and rinse off with, um, I, I don't use WD-40. So this part is now clean, uh, tidy, and the thing to just bear in mind that this will rust now in front of your eyes, uh, basically. So um, a good thing to do is to give it a spray of something like 3-in-1 or an oil lubricant just to keep it from rusting as you get it ready for uh, greasing up um, and ready for reinstallation. Uh, once you've got the thrust bearing rollers all greased up, um, you'll have a far less worrying time of them falling out um, but the best thing to do really is to keep them together I would also suggest <coughs> um, just doing again another quick check and inspection to make sure you've not lost any of the rollers um, in the thrust bearing if you're using rags or anything always tip them out on your towel before you throw them away um, but it looks like all of those are in place, particularly the one I've just had to replace because it fell out. So this part here is ready for uh, greasing up and reinstallation. Um, but before we do that, I'll just give it a quick blast of uh, some three in one, just to stop it uh, rusting in front of our eyes as it were so there we are right that's ready for greasing up and uh, reinstallation do take a moment clean everything else you know there's no point if you've done all this time stripping it all out and that kind of stuff then uh, do uh, give everything else a good clean and inspection, make sure it's all okay. And of course the adjustment thread, uh, you want to give that a good clean. Get rid of any old cack on it, any old grease, grime, dirt etc. So you can grease it up nice and fresh. Make sure you get into all the threads on this into that gap there so you get rid of all the grime get ready for uh, reinstallation
tissue isn't the best thing for doing this by the way because it all breaks up etc but I've, I've got no rags left so this will do Yeah, this arm earlier on, so with this dirty rag, give that a good clean off. Again, any rust or anything that you see, you get rid of it. Give it a nice clean, polish dry up, etc. Now while we're doing this I've had the body in the white spirit drip as well. So uh it's out of there. I actually ended up removing that uh rubber bit from in there before putting it into the white spirit and give this a really good clean and tidy. So I'll finish cleaning up all the bits um, and then we'll come back and look at the greasing up and uh, reinstallation onto the bike and um, adjusting the brakes which uh, is a bit of a pain uh, with these. So yeah, uh, we'll come back when it's all clean.